Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware, and today we're looking at a parts list for a PC that you can build right now for actually a little bit cheaper than you're likely to find the current generation consoles. That's the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X. So before we get into the parts list and exactly what you need to do to get yourself up and running on the PC platform, I do want to give a word to today's video sponsor and that is the coldest water now these water bottles come in several different sizes and colors and the best part is they will all keep your water cold all day long there is a discount code in the description down below HH10 for 10% off of your order or if you're just looking for a free water bottle a giveaway that is just kind of a rolling giveaway they do is also linked down below so go ahead and check out the coldest water in the video description Now, if it isn't already clear just by the fact that this Ryzen box is sitting here, we are sort of kind of featuring those new APUs that are just now available for purchase. Those will also be linked down below. And while you're down there checking out these new APUs, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because this 5700G that just showed up, yeah, it's going to be tested over the next several days on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. But this build can be easily paired together with one of these APUs, though, because I'm actually assuming you're still going to want a dedicated GPU of some kind, I'm actually building it out with the slightly more available and likely slightly cheaper Ryzen 5600X. And that takes us right into the actual parts list here. We are starting with the Ryzen 5600X, that six cores, 12 threads of gaming goodness. It is an excellent CPU for getting yourself up and running. And it is at least somewhat uh, future proof, compatible, whatever you wanna say. Six cores and 12 threads isn't going away as a really good place to be for a gaming PC anytime soon. And also being on the most recent AMD architecture here, these six cores and 12 threads are actually very highly performing cores. So this thing is gonna serve you for a good long number of years if you're picking the 5600X up to game. Now, if you are going for an APU instead of one of the 5600Xs, if you're going for something like a 5700G or 5600G, those just launched. And as such, you may have to wait just a little bit of time for shipping. The good news is at least as of the launch day and now the day after the launch day, of the 56 and 5700G, they are still right around their MSRP pricing, maybe slightly above depending on where you're looking. But again, they're linked down below in case you wanna check out current availability and pricing. Now, when it comes to the motherboard, I'm looking for a few things when I'm trying to put together a budget-friendly-ish gaming PC. The first one is I want four DIMM slots for memory, and that's just so I have a very easy upgrade path. If I start with eight gigabytes, I can double that to 16 gigabytes very easily which I'm not doing with this one. But in this case, if I start with 16 gigabytes, which I am with a silicon power kit, I can also then double that to 32 gigabytes if I really need the extra RAM, which I don't really see as being a limiting factor of this particular build, but it is a very simple upgrade path. The other thing that I love about this motherboard is it is a B550M motherboard. So that is gonna allow you to put a modest overclock on whatever CPU you do decide to go with. And lastly, it does have a VRM heatsink. Uh, I wouldn't pair this motherboard with any really over the top serious CPUs. Like I wouldn't be putting a 5900X or a 5950X on it, but for something like a 5600X, a 5700G, yeah, it's gonna be just fine. Now for storage, I have a 500 gigabyte NVMe drive. This is one of those places where I always recommend going with a commodity class SSD, basically something that's cheap and gets you up and running, and then pick something with a capacity that suits your needs. I find that about 500 gigabytes is a really good ground to start at right now with the pricing versus uh, what kind of quality you're getting out of an NVMe drive. It's a relatively affordable place to start when you're talking about storage, and it's gonna allow you to at least put several of your favorite games on your PC before you need to upgrade the storage, or before you have to worry about uninstalling a game so you can install a different game uh, because you ran out of storage completely. So 500 gigs is a good place to start, but obviously if you need more, just get a higher capacity drive, and if you need less, then just get a smaller SSD. Now for our case here, 
here, we have the Cooler Master Master Box Lite 3.1. And this is one you might want to actually add a fan or two in addition to the one that comes with it. But basically, this case is just a stand-in case where if you need better cooling, you may have to add fans or modify the cooling a little bit. Or if you want to go the just uh, ready-to-go out-of-the-box solution, you can spend an extra 5 or $10 to get a case with significantly better cooling. Just like with the SSD in the case department, being a micro ATX motherboard we're already working with, just buy a case that supports micro ATX motherboards and then just purchase one that suits your needs from an airflow perspective. And obviously from an aesthetic perspective, you want the thing to look good on your desk, at least to your eye, because you're going to be staring at it all the time. And finally, for the power supply, I highly recommend, at least right now, the EVGA B stock website because there are some incredibly cheap power supplies that are actually really solid units on the B stock website. And especially if you hit up EVGA's B stock website on a Wednesday, I just saw one the other day for 450 watts. It was 80 plus certified and it was $12.99. Now, sure, it did have like $7 shipping and handling, so still $20 for a really solid power supply to get you up and running. I would recommend getting a 600 watt one, which is probably gonna end up costing you $25 or $30 on their midweek madness sale on those Wednesdays. But regardless, it's the cheapest way. If you're in the United States, if you're looking for a cheap, good power supply, that's basically the one-stop shop right now. Obviously, their availability comes and goes a little bit. So if you're just slowly parting this PC together, this would be a part that you want to just check back often. And then when you find a power supply that suits your needs and is at a good price, go ahead and click that buy button. Now, as of the date of recording this list, we have a PC build here for $560.92. But the keen-eyed among you would notice there is no GPU with the system if you're using the 5600X. That is, it is completely unusable as a gaming PC unless you add in a GPU. And that's where the sort of new egg shuffle lottery comes in. If you can find a GPU for at or near MSRP, then you're probably gonna be adding about $400, $450 to this build to get something like an RTX 3060. Uh, the new X shuffles have been a little bit more expensive than that. So maybe more like $500 to get yourself up to about $1,100, which is expensive, don't get me wrong. This is not exactly a budget PC. However, considering that right now, if you look at eBay for a brand new console, one of the top tier ones, the Xbox Series X, or the PlayStation 5, those are in the $700 plus range. And I would argue over the course of the lifetime of this PC, it is actually likely to save you that much money just by saving you money on things like not paying for online and also by generally speaking, having better game sales, whether it's through Steam summer sales or whether you hit up other websites like maybe you are somebody that believes in a G2A or other such. Uh, websites like that, or possibly even, like, I don't know, GVG Mall seems to be pretty good about giving keys out for reasonable cost. Point being, the PC platform is probably, as a platform, going to save you some money over the long haul. It's just that often the startup cost is a little bit more than the console. So if you're willing to save up a little bit more money, you can get a really, really good gaming PC, and then it will slowly recoup that money that you spent in addition to what you would have been spending on a console anyways. Though, if you're just looking for something to play some eSports titles and you just want to get up and running with the idea of being you're going to upgrade later, something like a 5700G or a 5600G is a great way to go because it does add just a little bit of cost to the build that I presented with the 5600X. The difference is you can actually get up and running and gaming with the 5600G and 5700G without adding a GPU at all, which gives you the luxury of waiting on those GPU prices to fall back to earth to the point where you can actually add a dedicated GPU into the equation at a reasonable cost. So I've rambled enough about this. Links for everything are in the description down below, but I do wanna hear from you guys. What do you think about a build like this? that is really aimed at somebody that may have been going towards the console but just figured out that maybe they're not available right now and they're definitely not available at least with any regularity at or near MSRP. So instead, you're looking at a gaming PC. Let me know all your thoughts on this particular build list in those comments down below. Otherwise, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.